Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Could you tell me your name, please? My name is Allison Elvord. We've met before. All right. Thank you, Ms. Elvord. Yeah, we just always make sure we got the right person because we have a couple of people in jail, so we want to make sure we got the right person. We are on the record of the people of the state of Michigan versus Allison Elvord. This is file 21-0634-SM. Council, identify yourselves for the record. Yeah, hey, do so on behalf of the people. Stephen House, you on behalf of Ms. Elvord for the limited purpose of her arraignment. All right, Ms. Alvord, uh, Mr. House Seal is here just today to get you through this process. If you wish to have a court appointed attorney or an attorney after today's date, you either have to hire one or request a court appointed attorney. All right. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to show you a copy of the complaint on the computer screen. If you would please let me know when you see it. That way I know that it's there. I see it, sir. Okay. The, uh, the allegations in this case um, stem from an incident that the prosecutor's office has alleged that on or about May 13th of this year, located at 680 South Homer Road in Homer Township, Midland County, Michigan, it is alleged that you made an assault or assault and battery upon a person named William Curley. If you're convicted of that crime, it's a misdemeanor called assault or assault and battery. It's punishable by up to 93 days in jail and or $500 in fines plus court costs. You see here it talks about consecutive sentencing, but to be consecutive, there would have to be more than one charge. So there's no, not more than one charge. But it does say that if you're convicted of this crime, you may also have to pay for uh, damage that resulted in somebody else's property or if someone else was hurt or if someone else was My killed. My property was only thing damaged, yes. Damaged. All right. Do you understand the charge and the maximum penalty that I've just read? I understand the charge and the fact that I understand what you're charging me with. What I don't understand is how I'm being charged with what he should be being charged with. I have sure. this going on Hang from on. him punching me Hang in the face on. eight Hang times Hang and damaging my answer. property. Yep. Let me, let I would me like answer him a couple. Charged. Hang on. Let me answer a couple questions. Number one, as a judge, I don't charge anyone. The prosecutor's office charges. And number two, they take a look at what the police send to them. And then they read the reports and then they take a look at the circumstances and then they make the charging decision based on what they read in the reports. I've not read the report. I have no idea. I got I got a summary of the report and the summary of the report enough that there it would appear that you could be charged. That doesn't mean you'll be found guilty of the offense. Doesn't mean you're even guilty of the offense. In fact, you're presumed innocent of the charge until proven guilty. But I don't charge you. And they made the decision based on what they read in the report. So it's it's important for you to. Get a copy of the police report so you can see what the prosecutor How do I press charges against him? Well, How exactly do I press time? charges against him? You, um, I because I would like charges advice. pressed against him. I, you've said that a couple of times, and you can make a complaint and see and get the information to the police. But right now, we're just talking about the charges against you, the charge against you. So you understand the charge, Mr. House Seal. How do you um, suggest your client should plead to this charge? Ms. Elvord. Please not guilty and request a court appointed attorney. All right, Ms. Alvord, yes, are you are you currently employed? I'm currently not employed. All right, let me just show up on a computer screen so you and I, you'll know where I'm getting the questions from. So in order to make a determination as to your, um, if you qualify, these are the questions I'm getting. So we have you living in an address at 77 West Beamish Road in Sanford. Is that still a valid address for you? That is correct, sir. I've lived there for nine years. Okay. Is that a place you're renting or are you buying it or do you live with someone else I who's own, renting? Or you own it outright, I meaning own, you don't owe the bank any money? Nope. Okay. That's good. Um, are you single, married, divorced, or separated? I'm married in the middle of trying to file for divorce against the man who assaulted me. Okay. And then do you have any minor children? This is all about your financial. One situation. minor child. He's 13 years old. Okay. And you say that you're unemployed at this time. Yes, I am. All right. Do you receive any type of assistance such as food stamps, Medicare, Medicaid, or social security disability? I have Medicaid right now. Okay. You would qualify then. That's all we were really looking to, to see if you qualify. So I'm going to determine that you do qualify for the assistance. I'll appoint an attorney for you. Katrina, do we have, is it June 1st? Is that the, um, Pre-trial date? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So 
on that date, because you have an attorney, the attorney will negotiate or talk with the prosecutor and they'll need to get, be able to get in touch with you. Is there a telephone number and an email that we can send information to you? Yes, I have a home, home phone number. It's area code 989-687-4031, I believe. Okay. Or yeah, I have my cell address? phone. That, yes, well, it is. cell phone too, if they try to get hold of you. Go ahead. What's the cell phone? It's area code 989-778-8614. Okay. And do you have an email so that we can send you instructions that way regarding Zoom? Yes, I do, sir. It's Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N-K-A-L-V-O-R-D at gmail.com. So it's your name with your middle initial at gmail.com. Correct, sir. Correct, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, and so I will go ahead. Uh, we'll set... Set a bond in this case, Mr. Houseel, your argument regarding bond, sir. Could you do a personal recognizance bond? I'm currently on work. I'm currently not working and I don't have I think the means to pay the a bond. That's, that's part of the analysis. So let me hear from Mr. Houseel and then I'll li listen to Ms. Dusso and then we'll make a decision. I'll make a decision. Well, Your Honor, in this incident last night, I have not read the police report or seen it, but some things are um, fairly obvious. It's fairly clear from looking at Ms. Alvor that she's been beaten in the face and she did go to the emergency room. Uh, she was also the person who called 911 and asked for police assistance in this matter. Um, not seeing the police report, I don't know the basis for the officer's decision to arrest her and not the person who uh, punched her repeatedly in the face. Um, who was also under the influence of alcohol. Okay. at the time of the incident when I was not. Okay, hang on. So I'm trying to listen to Mr. Housefield regarding what your bond should be. I apologize for interrupting. Ms. Alborn okay. also, she did mention uh, her. she has a son who she is the sole caretaker for. Her son is 13 and generally lives with her. Uh, the person apparently here who's the pledged victim is the grandfather of, of her son. And she was at uh, that location, his, his place, when this occurred last night. So um, she does have some uh, criminal history, but she's certainly uh, well tied to the area. She's to, as I can, anything I can find, she has always appeared in court when she's supposed to be here uh, with her son and her family and her home. She is certainly uh, tied and stable in the area, so I do not, do not think she poses any danger to the community and nor does she pose a flight risk. I think also there's some question about who may in fact be the real victim here. And I just asked the court to take those things into consideration when setting bond. Thank you. All right. Ms. Dusso, uh, any comment regarding bond? Uh, Your Honor, I guess to address some of the things that have been said here, um, the reason that that she was arrested is that there was a, basically a third party statement that um, she was the one punching the victim. So um, there is basis from somebody who wasn't actually involved in whatever scuffle was going on between the two of them that indicated uh, her involvement in this. And uh, who was that, man? Hang on, man. Can I ask who this that was? Not the, this is, hang on. This is not the time to ask questions. That's for your, you and your attorney to talk about. I'm just listening regarding bond. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Thank you. Yep, so, sorry. Your Honor, I, you know, point the point being that you know there there is obviously a, a basis for the charges we would not have issued otherwise. But uh, in addition to the allegations of the the assault here, she has uh, two attempted resisting and obstructing convictions from last year. The year prior to that, use of controlled substances. Um, so I, it, you know, these last few years have not been good years for her necessarily, including other assaultive offenses. So I do have some concerns uh, about Ms. Alvord and uh, especially in in the assaultive nature. So we would ask that obviously she not be having any kind of assaultive, threatening, or abusive behavior if she is released, uh, given the relatively recent uh, drug use charges. I think. Some drug testing would not be a bad idea either. Obviously, we are asking that she not have any contact with the victim or his residence. I, her 
as far as her son, at least according to the information in the police report, her son had been living uh, with the victim, his grandfather, for a few weeks uh, on, at the point where this happened. So I don't know if that situation is changing at this point or not, but um, she will obviously need to figure that out if she's not to have contact with, with the victim. All right. Taking into consideration the charges, the arguments from both Mr. Alseal and Ms. Dusso, looking at Ms. Alvord's prior criminal history, it looks as if she has a misdemeanor warrant out of Saginaw County, 25 mile pickup for an incident from a uh, warrant for narcotic equipment possession, that she has three convictions, one in 2006 for possession of marijuana in Midland, one for use of narcotic cocaine ecstasy in Saginaw in 2019, and the two resist obstruct police officers and 2020. Are you still on probation for those offenses or are you all done with that? No, I've cleaned up. I've cleaned up. Right. I'm doing much better. All right. So um, I know her financial situation is tight. Um, uh, it does appear that she has ties to the community. I'm not going to require her to pay any money to be able to go out on bonds, personal recognizance, <sighs> but I am going to order pretrial services. I have some concerns for, especially if she is using, she says she's cleaned up, so she shouldn't have any problem testing. So I'm going to order that she engage in pretrial services. She may not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. She may not violate any laws. She needs to appear each time she's required. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. You're not to consume any alcoholic beverages, illegal drugs, or uh, recreational marijuana. You're subject to random drug and alcohol testing. You're going to be subject to pretrial services. I do services. have marijuana in my to, system. You're not I do have marijuana engage. in my system. It's the only thing I have been using. That's, I apologize. Uh, I can stop them. Yep. If it's recreational, you'll need to stop. You are uh, not to engage in a threatening, intimidating, violent, aggressive, or abusive, dis, uh, disorderly behavior towards anyone. You're not to have any contact with a victim or go to his home. And you are uh, to engage pretrial services, as I indicated before. That's where we have the telephone number so that we can make contact with you regarding <coughs> that. They will not ask you about the facts of the case. You shouldn't talk to them about the facts of the case, only your attorney. On June 1st, you will not be in court or show up, you'll have a contact from your attorney. Your attorney will contact you and let you know what the outcome is. If we need to move forward with a trial, then we will reschedule that and you'll have an opportunity to uh, uh, to appear at that time. So we'll be adjourned on your case at this time. I am appointing an attorney for you. Your next court date is June 1st, but your attorney will negotiate with the prosecutor on your behalf at that point in time. I don't know who's going to be assigned to your case, because we send it off to the court appointed attorney uh, office and then they make the decision. And a lot of times they'll take a look. If you've had a relationship with one of the other attorneys from past cases, a lot of times they take that consideration, but that doesn't mean that that's what will happen. All right, we'll be adjourned on this case. I don't know if Saginaw will plan on wanting you, but they do have that I've been working out. with them because it's over fines. My warrant with them is over fines. And I've been working with them on it. I just haven't had the money to pay them off yet. So they haven't had me come in for that reason. Okay. Well, I'm just telling you that as far as, as far as Midland County is concerned, you can be released. But if Saginaw County says no, then that's not us. That's them. All right. We'll be adjourned. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You did have a hold from Saginaw. So I, I do have to check with them. You can go ahead and sit right there. Yep. So uh, as soon as uh, I get out of here, I'll check with them and we'll, I'll let you know, okay? Uh, Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. Could you tell me your name, please? Kelly Rennie Smith. All right. We are on the record in the people of the state of Michigan versus Kelly Smith. Let me just pull my documents up so we can hit it here. This is file 21-0638FY. Counsel, identify yourselves for the record, please. I'll tell you, do some behalf of the people. Stephen Houseel on behalf of Ms. Smith for the limited purpose of her arraignment. All right, Ms. Smith, Mr. Houseel is here today to represent you only for today through the pre uh, through this arraignment process. If you want an attorney after today's date, you either have to request one or you will have to hire one. Do you understand that? I understand. All right, I'm going to show you a copy of the complaint so that you can see where I'm getting the information from. And then I'll ask you after I've read it, if you understand that. So let me know when it pops up on the computer screen so that we can go through it together. Is it there? I see it. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Let's move it over to this screen. We got a little bit bigger screen on my left. 
All right, it, it is alleged in this case, 210638FY, that on or about May, thir May 13th. Your Honor. Yes. I'm sorry, uh, the complaint is very difficult to read. It's very large on our screen, so you it, can't it's see it. true. Anything. Okay, well, I'm going to have to screen back because that vision that you have is the same one I have if I leave it on the middle one. So okay. um, I'm not certain why it's scanning in so big, but I'll probably just... <sighs> I'll probably just read it then. Let me take okay, it I apologize. Not sure. Nope. It's there's something going on with the scanning that makes it very large. So, ma'am, this uh, incident is alleged to have taken place on West Isabella Road, which is also known as M20, Greendale Township, Midland County, Michigan. It is alleged that you uh, did in count one knowingly or intentionally possess methamphetamine, which typically is a felony punishable by up to ten years in prison and or fifteen thousand dollars in fines plus court costs. And unless you're sentenced to more one year in prison, the court must impose license sanctions outlined in court uh, in um, Health Code 333-7408A. However, they're also alleging that you have been convicted of other felonies, two other felonies before. Once on or about July 6th of 2015, you were convicted of uh, controlled substance operating maintaining a laboratory in the 55th Circuit Court in Clare. And once on December 5th, 2016, you're convicted of Controlled Substance Operating, Maintaining a Laboratory in Clare, making this at least your third felony. If that's true, then instead of being a felony punishable by up to 10 years, it could be up to life in prison for you. Or in the alternative, they've also charged you with being a uh, person who has a prior conviction for substance abuse. And so they've charged you with the second or subsequent notice and indicating that on or about July 6th of 2015 in the 55th Circuit Court in Clare, you were convicted of maintaining a laboratory and controlled substance. So what that does is instead of it being a 10 year, it could be 20 years. And instead of $15,000, it could be $30,000. So those are charged in the alternative. On count two, they charged you with felony of knowing or potentially possessing less than 25 grams of a mixture con containing a controlled substance heroin, Typically, it's a felony punishable by up to four years in prison and or $25,000 in fines plus court costs. Um, licensed sanctions if you're sentenced to one less than one year in jail. However, you're also charged with that as being habitual offender third, which means it could go up to 15 years. Or if the theory holds under the second offense of a drug charge, it could be up to eight years in prison and $50,000 in fines plus court costs. And count three... They have charged you with the crime of operating while intoxicated with an occupant less than 16 because on the same date, time and place, it is alleged you did operate a vehicle upon a highway West Isabella Road under the influence of a controlled substance while Kingston Smith, a person less than 16 years of age, was occupying the vehicle. If you're convicted of that crime, it's a misdemeanor punishable between $200 and $1,000 in fines and not more than one year in jail or 30 to 90 days to community service or both costs of prosecution and you may have to pay for rehabilitative services you may have to re maybe order to do rehabilitative services or reimburse the government for any emergency response expenses incurred and if not forfeited the vehicle must be forfeited and if it's not forfeited it must be immobilized in count four you're charged with operating while intoxicated because they believe on the same date time and place you did operate a vehicle upon a highway west isabella road while under the influence of a controlled substance that's a misdemeanor if you're convicted, punishable by up to 93 days in jail and or $100 to $500 in fines plus court costs and or 360 hours community service. Rehabilitative programs could be ordered. Vehicle mobilization would be mandatory depending on your driving history and prior convictions. You may have to pay the cost of prosecuting you, reimbursing the government for any emergency response vehicles uh, associated with that. And finally, you're charged with the crime of operating without security, which means insurance on the same date, time and place it is alleged you did being the owner or operator of a Cadillac Escalade with respect to which security insurance is required, you didn't have it. And you were operating that vehicle on West Isabella Road, which is a public highway in the state of Michigan without having the full force and effect of security complying with the above statutes. That is a misdemeanor if you're convicted of a punishment of not more than one year in jail and a fine not less than $200 or more than $500. So you're charged with two felonies and three misdemeanors. The three misdemeanors are operating while intoxicated less than 16 and operating while intoxicated no insurance. The two felonies are possession of uh, narcotics. 
Do you understand the charges and the maximum penalties that I've just read? I do, sir. All right, Mr. Houseel, how should your client plead to these charges? Ms. Smith pleads not guilty and requests a court appointed attorney. All right, Ms. Smith, are you currently employed? I am not, I have on, I'm on unemployment. Okay, and uh, you have at least one minor child. How many minor children do you have? Kingston is all I have. He's, him and I have been together every day since he's been born. He's right. never been without me. And I've never been without is, him. How old he's is he? Three. He's three. All right. Um, and do you receive any type of assistance? Food stamps, Medicare, Medicaid, or Social Security disability? I uh, just Medicaid. All right. The address we have for you is 2122 Arlington Avenue in Flint, Michigan. Is that a valid address? That is correct. All right. Uh, is that a place you're renting, buying, or do you live with someone? I I own that home. So you do not owe any money on it? You own it outright? You're not paying more? I own insurance. that home. Correct. Okay. And you're unemployed? Yes. What do you do when you are employed? Uh, I was cleaning houses with my aunt down in Fenton area. All right. I'll, I'll appoint an attorney for you. We'll need to make a determination on bond. Mr. Halsey. Like, Please, been, I uh, need to be with my son. Has been pointed out, right? She does have some history uh, with some uh, substance abuse issues. She does report herself that she has been uh, with those other cases involved in drug court and has been successful there. Although I have not been able to uh, confirm that. Obviously, this event. Uh, is a failure of being successful there. So there may be some ongoing need for some kind of services to assist her. And again, as Ms. Smith points out, she is the caretaker for her child here. And I think she's certainly uh, kind of dismayed by her own behavior here and uh, would like to get her life kind of back on track. And just ask that the court take those things into consideration when setting bond. Thank you. All right, Ms. Uh, do so comment regarding bond. Your Honor, I, I think it would be absolutely appropriate to give Ms. Smith a, a monetary bond in this case. I, you know, I understand she has a, a young child, but quite frankly, looking at her history, if she's being honest in what she's saying, that that child has never spent a day without her, I, I have some fears and concerns for that child given her criminal history. Um, and especially after the events uh, of this particular case, uh, wherein she not only was driving under the influence with the child in the car, but actually was involved in a collision uh, as a result of that. So I, I think, unfortunately for her and her child, she's putting both of them and everyone else at risk with her behavior. And it would appear, again, based on her history, especially, you know, this, this history isn't even that old, that she's had several uh, attempts and involvements with the courts involving uh, drug offenses, presumably those either resulted in jail sentences wherein she would not have been with her child or uh, attempts at rehabilitation, which apparently have not worked. So I have very large concerns over the substance abuse history and the current offenses here. I, I certainly think that if she I just is, relapsed just two months ago, I've been clean. I've been doing really good. I've not been doing nothing with my son. I promise. I've been doing great. I just, please, I'm so sorry. I will do anything. There is nothing that I will not do to show the courts that I will, I can do better. I and I will I never understand, touch ma'am. Hang on, just a minute. Hang on. I need to make a determination. Please. Katrina, I'm having difficulties making the determination with uh, only one of us speaking at the time. All right. Um, court rule takes court rule 6106F1 says I can look at the prior criminal history. I can look, listen to the arguments. I can look at the serious nature of the charges. The defendant has four, three driving license suspended out of Clare County in uh, 2015. She has a uh, larceny between $200 and $1,000 in Clare County in 2015. She has a 2015, and that was in March. In July of 2015, she has a conviction for felony operating and maintaining a laboratory. That's usually really guarding the meth. And then the next year in December, she had another conviction for the same crime. And in 2019, she has 
a felony possession of methamphetamine. So I'm, I'm uncertain if those are in place that potentially she could even be charged as a habitual offender fourth if all of those convictions were put in place, which would, could make this potentially up to life in prison. I can also take a look at the uh, allegations when the complaint was sworn out. In this case, Ms. Dusso is correct that uh, if the defendant is uh, alleged to have been under the influence of some narcotics, there was a crash that was involved. Her three-year-old son was in the car and he was not actually even, he'd been unrestrained, unrestrained, the child was, according to the witnesses at the scene. She's lucky he's not dead. If he's dead, she said, not spend any time with him or the other family members, the other people who were driving that day. No, she is a risk to this community. She's a risk to herself. She's a risk to her child. I am going to set sentence this way. She may not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. She must appear in court each time she's required. I am setting the bond at $100,000 cash or surety. If she makes that bond, she is to engage in uh, P5, excuse me, she's to engage in um, the pretrial services. She's to be engaged in uh, testing. She's not to consume any alcoholic beverages, illegal drugs, or uh, re recreational marijuana. She is to engage pretrial services at least two contacts per month. She's to get a biopsychosocial assessment done and follow all those recommendations and rules. If she's unable to make the $100,000 cash or surety, then she is to engage in the PA 511 Women Seeking Safety Program or any program for PA 511. The probable cause conference will be on May 25th at one o'clock. The preliminary examination will take place on June 1st. At what time, Katrina? I'm sorry, sir. June 1st at three o'clock. June 1st at three o'clock. I am appointing an attorney for her. She is to remain in jail until $100,000 cash or surety is placed. Ma'am, I would... Uh, I would ask you to take a long look at your life. You said you relapsed. It almost cost your son his life. We'll be adjourned on this case on May 25th at one o'clock. Thank you. We're all set.